Hey everybody, I'm back and we got a really cool video for you today. We're gonna check out the new rep box version 2.1. My name's Jim and this is the Edge of Tech. If you remember a couple months ago, I actually posted a video on how to build the RepCord RepBox version 2. So what we did uh, is we built it, we went through the complete assembly, and when that was done and the video was posted, Pooch and the gang liked it. Well, they actually sent me the version 2.1 box to build. I really like this box because it has my special side panels on it but they, they, they're really cool. You can keep your filament in there, you can actually lock it, help keep the moisture out. Um, there's just a ton of stuff you can do. So today, we're gonna check out version 2.1. We're gonna build this thing and see how it compares to version two. So this right here is my version two box. I'm gonna remove that from the bench and if you wanna see the complete assembly for that, look right here and I'll make sure that the video is posted up here so you can check out the assembly for version two. So we're gonna take version two and put it right over here. So I'm gonna set that right there. Um, it says RepCord 2 right there on the box. Uh, actually, what's really crazy is with this shipment, I got a second box and it is this one right here. And this thing is really heavy. So I'm excited to see what's all inside this box. We're gonna get it all out. We're gonna lay it out and see what's all in there. And let's get this build going. So real quick, I flipped open the first box here and I just wanted to show you how nice it was packed. Uh, we have a really nice QC checklist. They went through all of the stuff here that needs to be checked off. Um, it looks like they threw some extra stuff in here, which is awesome. But everything in here is packaged very nicely. It's packaged for success to get to your house without breaking, and I really appreciate that. So the first thing you wanna do is lay out all your parts and just walk through, lay them out all on a big table like this, and just make sure you have everything. All right, to get started, uh, you're gonna need a two millimeter Allen wrench here a screwdriver, a scissors, a razor, or a razor knife, hobby knife, whatever you got, and a flush cutters. Now grab your rep saver box that came, flip it over towards you, pull out your favorite color here. We'll go with green. Once you got your favorite one out, go ahead and eat this and get ready for a great build. So what we need to do next is prepare our brackets. I've laid them out like this, and what we have on the base, we're gonna have four corners and two centers. On the top rear, we're gonna have um, two corners and three centers, and on the top front, we're just gonna have the two corners. What you need to do is find parts pack E. I really love that they label all these for us, and it makes it so much easier. So find parts pack E. I'm gonna use this little dish here, and I'm gonna put all my fasteners inside that dish. Um, you can do whatever you would like. Um, some people have a magnetic bowl. Um, some people have other size, styles dish. Some people have other styles of dish that you use. Um, it does come with the two millimeter Allen wrench here, as you can see, and we'll be using that soon. But all of your parts are now in here. So we're gonna start on the bottom corner. I'm gonna use this bracket right here, and we're gonna need four of these. The orientation you need for this is if you tip this up and look at the front, um, there's a slope here. So turn that slope uh, towards you and then flip it down. So what you have right now is the slope is on this side. There's a flat spot here with a hole here. There's a flat spot here with a hole up here. And that's where we need to insert our, our square nuts here. All these are square nuts into the brackets. And we only need four of these. So what we need is one in the top right here. And then once you get them pushed in like that, if you see that, um, you wanna take your Allen wrench and push it through to see if it can go through. If it can't go through there, take it and push it down a little bit further. And this is where a needle nose pliers would work as well. But I like to push the Allen wrench all the way through so you can lift it up. Just make sure it's good and through there. So then turn it down and we need to insert um, another one in this top area. And when I'm done with this, I'll show you exactly where we put them. There's some really good instructions um, on the assembly page. And so I got that one in, I'm gonna push this through. It does not go through. So push it down just a little more, make sure it goes through there just like this. The last one we need to put in for this uh, bottom corner is in the slot in the, in the center here. So take it 
and push it through. Uh, so as you can see, it's right here. Give it a little more push, take your Allen wrench and make sure it's good. So something you may want to try is grab um, one of the screws that came with the kit and also your Allen wrench. And just make sure that you can screw into these because later you're going to have to do that. So if you can screw into them very easily right now, and I would try every single one. I know this takes extra time, but it's very important that these go in. So you don't even have to use your Allen wrench. If you can do it this by hand uh, and it grips like right now, see, it's not gripping. So my nut needs to be adjusted a little bit. There we go. So now it's gripping really nicely. And you want to make sure every single one of these nuts um, that are pushed in will grip the screw or the bolt that you're going to push in. Because if you don't do that, what's going to happen is you could get it um, ready to mount on the rep box and they don't work or they strip out, etc. So just make sure that you take a screw, screw it into each one. So if I look at this facing you right here, I have... One in the center right here. If I turn it, I have one pushed into the top here. On the back side of that top, there's a hole. So make sure that's there. And then I have one pushed in right here and there's a hole underneath that too. So that is how the four bottom corners go. Go ahead and finish the other three and uh, we'll go on to the next step. Okay, something cool to note is if you screw up on one of these, it's not a big deal. <clears throat> Take your Allen wrench. Um, flip the part around to the side that you can push through and just push out the T-nut. See it come out like that. So then you can re-put it in where you need to put it in. It's really cool that they did this. You can push it right through and get those out real easily. Now that we got the four bottom corners done, we need two bottom centers. That is super easy. You're going to put them exactly in the same spots that you did um, with these, with the exception of you don't need to put one in the center. So we got them done. If, you, if I set them like this, um, so the slant is this way, slant here. Uh, I pushed one in this side here and I pushed one in the bottom here. Next, what we need to do is the top rear corners. There's gonna be two. So you need to um, put the orientation uh, like this. So if you look at this, there's a slot here and a hole here. Um, and then of course your angles here. So a slot here and a hole here. You're gonna push one piece in here, you're gonna push one piece in the top, and then one piece in the angle like we've done before. So make sure you push your Allen key through, uh, make sure that the holes are wide open, and then again, I like to take a screw and screw them into each one just to be safe. Now we're gonna move on to the top rear center brackets. There's going to be three of those, okay? So you need three pieces, um, we have them here. They need a special orientation as well. And that orientation is like this. If you see uh, the slope is down here, there's a slot on the top and a hole. That's the orientation we need. So take one of your square nuts and push it in the top there. And then take one and push it in the back. And that's all you need to do for these. Now you need to do that with um, two more. So knock that out quick now. Now we have these three done, we're gonna move on to the last two. Next, we need to look at the top corner brackets. There's only two of them, and we need to make sure that these are in the right orientation as well. So how I uh, put them on here is how I see them on the screen. The slope is down here facing me. There's a flat spot right here for a uh, square nut to go into, and then on the top, there's a hole. So if that's facing you, there's a slope here, a flat spot and a hole. And you wanna make sure that these are correct as well. So just pay attention, this is step number 15, the uh, top front corner brackets. So I'm gonna push one into that one and then I'm gonna push one into the corner piece. Just check them uh, with your Allen wrench, make sure that your Allen wrench goes through them real good. Check them with your screw and do that for the last one. So I got those two done right here. Um, again, it's very important when you do any of these just to follow the steps and make sure you get them in the right orientation. Um, on the instructions in the uh, pre-build preparation, 
Um, it goes step by step with some very nice graphics on how to do this. Now you wanna grab all the pieces for the structure of the box and we're gonna dry fit uh, the box real quick. This is where you're gonna determine if you want the holes in the front or the back on the top and the bottom. So this is a very important step. Dry fit your box and I'll show you what that looks like. Now let's walk through dry fitting. Take a side panel here, then grab the back of the box and you're gonna put that in uh, so the black side is facing inside of the box. And when you put it in correctly, it'll go all the way down to the base here. Then this is where we wanna choose which way your holes go. So this is the bottom of your box here that you're looking at. And uh, in my case, I think I want the holes to be in the back of the box. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna put it in like that. So if you're looking at this, um, this is the bottom and this panel here, which is the bottom panel, the holes are in the back of the box. And I can tell that because this is the front. You can see the slope of the front of the box here. You can see that a little better in this shot. Here's the uh, side panel. Here's the back here. And here is the bottom of the box. In my case, I want the holes in the, bot or in the back so they're down the back of the box there. So now you need to decide where you want the, the top holes at. Do you want the top holes to come out the front of the box or the back of the box? So in this case, because this is the top here, we're gonna actually have the black facing out because it looks nicer that way. So because I want the uh, holes in the back of the box here, that's this part here, um, then you would just put it in like that. All right, so now what I have is both panels on. The fr uh, this is the bottom, this is the top, this is the back. Then there's the uh, corner panel here, and that goes in like this, this panel, because we're dry fitting here, that'll go in the center where there's an extra large hole there. So then what you do is take your top or your other side, however you want to look at it, and you'll, you'll set it in. Make sure everything snaps in nicely. So now this is all set up nicely. I have it set up where my holes are in the rear. You can remember, you can turn these panels so your holes are in the front, depending on what you want to do. And this is how the box will be assembled from now on. So this is the main assembly, step three. You want to grab parts pack C, which is all of the plugs here. And uh, what we want to do is just plug all of the holes in preparation for the build. Um, according to the instructions, it's a lot easier to prep them and push them in now than it is on the box, and you can always pull them out later. So uh, all you have to do is grab parts pack C, take your plugs, and just pop them in the holes. Well, it took a couple minutes, but I got them all in now. There is some extras, and I really appreciate that. That was step number three. Let's go on. Next, we want to do step four, the base assembly here. What you need is the base and two brackets that look like this. I believe this is part number two. Um, and what they'll do is they'll go on with the holes matching up on each side, like so. Make sure that the part is upside down so you see the unfinished side here, and all these will line up. So put your two pieces on like this, grab four screws, and grab the four corner pieces we made for the base corners. Now we have our four Brackets are four screws. We have our Allen wrenches here. Um, I really like these. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, otherwise, you can use the one that came with it. We need to take a corner piece, and how they are going to be orientated is the flat part up, um, slanted part in the box. So when you put it up here, um, for instance, in this corner, we'll say, it'll go in like this. So if I were to spin this around, here's the, the slanted part. And at the end of this, I'll show you how they're in. So take uh, your screw here, push it down through one of the corners, hold your part underneath, and take your Allen wrench and screw it in. Now, I'm not going to tighten mine all the way right now. I want to get them all on and make sure they're good before I tighten anything. Do that for the next uh, three. Do that for the next three now. So as you can see, I have all four on now, and I just wanted to show you the orientation because in the video um, step four, it doesn't really show this part. So 
make sure that all of the slanted pieces here are facing inside of the box. Once you get these four on, remember I didn't tighten them down quite yet. I'm going to leave them loose until we get a little further. Um, but once I get them all on, we're going to move to step five, which is assembling the center brackets. Okay, so in the kit I got, this was a very early kit, and it appears that they made some changes. In the original steps, it says to take two washers, push them on the end of a screw, and then put your brackets on in the center. Um, in the instructions, it says note. If you received only four thin washers, which would be these four, um, and would be part six, you received an early kit before we made a last minute change to this step. Please use two square nuts threaded all the way to the end of the screw instead of the thin washers. So I'm not gonna use these washers and I'm gonna take a square nut, I'm gonna put it on and I am going to thread it all the way to the end of the screw as instructed. So when you're done, you'll have a screw and a square nut and you'll do that twice. Then take your screw, put it through here with that square nut on, take your back bracket just like we did on the uh, outer sides there, screw that in so the center's mounted. Do that for the bottom and we're done with step number five. I have all six of the base brackets on now as you can see. They're all facing inside and they're not all the way tight, they're just hand tight. All right, next we need the rear panel and we're gonna put the top two corner brackets in. Um, so what you can do is, this is the top of the panel, you can see the finished side. There's two slots here. Face them away from you. Grab the top two pieces that we made earlier right here. And they're gonna go in uh, just like we did the last panel. So they're gonna go in like this with the angles facing inside of the panel. So this is the top two corner pieces of the rear of the box. For step seven, we're gonna put the top center pieces in that we created earlier. So same thing, I'm going to take uh, all three screws and pop them in the holes. I'm gonna take the part orientated with the angle side in just like we did on all the other ones. So take and do all three of those. Now we got all of the rear panel brackets in and this is how it looks from the other side. Um, the corners we did are here. These are the three centers and the two corners. All of them are angled to the inside of the box and this is how they should look as of now. Now, if you're getting value in this video, please click that subscribe button. Give me that like at this time. Um, we do a lot of videos like this and I know a lot of people that are watching are not subscribed. So please click that subscribe button if you're getting value out of this video and we're gonna keep moving. Now it's time to attach the base to the back of the panel. This is where you need to make your decision. Earlier, we dry fitted the box and I wanted all my holes out of the rear of the box. So this is how you would orientate it like this. So this is the ones we just did. Um, this is the panel we just worked on. And to actually connect these two, I'm going to connect them so all of the holes are in the rear of this box. If you want them in the front, you would turn this around and you can see all the plugs are now on the other side. You would use this side to go into the box as we, as we go forward. So if you want your holes in the front, base panels here, your back panels here, your base panels here, make sure your holes are this way. Like I said, I want mine in the rear, so I'm gonna go like that. Now what we need to do is connect the back to the base. And like I said, my holes are in the rear here, what I'm gonna do is actually turn this up. So now all this is the top of the base that we put on. So what you'll do is you'll stand up the back here and you'll stand up the base. In the back you have these three brackets and they are gonna go into the holes that are created for them right in the rear. So I'll get this started and then I'll show you exactly how it looks when I get them in. So let me show you what I'm looking at. This is the back of the bottom of the box. And what we just attached was these three to the rear. And how that attached was the three screws you see here, one, two, and three. So when you stand this up sideways like this, this is the back of the box. This is the bottom of the box that we built. I know that's a weird angle, um, but I just wanted to show you how it looks standing up. The other thing to note, it will the back of the box will hang lower than the bottom. 
that is done by design and that's okay. So if you did this correctly, this is the back of the bottom of the box and it has about that much space between here and there. Before we move on, now is a good time to tighten the three bolts you just put in along with the three bolts in here. So tighten those up now and then we'll move on to the next step. Now we move to step nine, the front exit panel assembly. Um, I grabbed all these plugs here and now is a good time to push the plugs into the two pieces you need here. Um, I believe exit panel is part nine and you'll need these two pieces. I'm gonna take these plugs and push them all into these holes because I can pop the ones I want out later. After you've plugged them, take two of our bolts here, feed them through like this into this panel. So you see they go here and here, flip them over. Then this is gonna flip over and sit right on top of that. So when you're done, this is how it'll look. Once you have your holes plugged here, we're gonna take these two things called riv nuts. They're brass looking and they're bigger and they fit right into the two holes in this panel. So you're gonna take those and you're gonna push them in there. And they look like rivets when you get them in. Then you're gonna flip this over. You're gonna set your panel on top that we just put the plugs in and push them down onto those riv nuts. And what that'll do is that'll hold it all nice and square for us. Then all we do is take a couple of our screws that we've been using the whole time, start them into the back of the riv nuts like this, then screw them down and tighten them in. Before we move on, I just wanted to show you that once you get them tightened in, they will stick out the back and that's okay. If you look at it from the front, you'll have all the plugs we just put in and then this little lip here. And from the rear, you'll see the plugs through those holes. The next thing we wanna do is grab your top panel here. We already got the plugs inserted earlier. So we're gonna lay that down and we're gonna work on putting the hinge on. What you wanna do is make sure that these holes are big enough for the riv nuts that need to go inside of them. And you're not gonna use every single hole, but it's a good idea just to, to make sure all the holes fit. That way you don't have to go back later and do this. I grabbed a um, Phillips screwdriver right here. I just gave it a little bit of a, a reaming in the holes. I just twisted it around a little bit. Um, be careful not to bend the uh, hinge here. Um, just go through all the holes, kind of give it a twist to make sure you open up that hole a little bit because you want the riv nuts to fit inside of them. So we got through all one side and that only took me maybe 20 seconds or so. Make sure all the debris is out, then take your riv nut and just make sure it'll fit inside of all these holes. So just go one to one, uh, push it down. If it doesn't fit, ream it a little better. Um, like that one right there didn't fit. I need to ream it out a little more. So I'll, I'll just give it a good twist with the, uh, the Phillips. And when it is opened enough, it will go in. So do that for all the holes and then we'll work on getting the hinge assembled. Now that we've reamed them out and our riv nuts fit in all the holes, um, this is where we're gonna install our hinge. Now it's very important that you pay attention because um, this hinge needs to go on the correct side of the box um, opposite of where you want your exit holes to be. Earlier we decided that I wanted all of my exit holes to be in the rear of the box. So um, I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna face the holes away from me to install the hinge um, up here. Now this is gonna be the front of the box. So if you want your holes to be in the front of the box, you would put your hinge on this side. If you want your holes to be in the rear of the box, you're gonna put your hinge on this side. Um, you can change this later, it is swappable, so you can change it if you need to take it apart and change it later. But for me, remember, rear of the box is where I want my holes, and that's where we'll move on to the next steps. Now we take our three uh, rib nuts and we push them through the top of the box here, just like this. Now we spin our uh, box over and you can see them sticking out. This is where we need to install the hinge. Um, so you look for the hinge pin, you're gonna face that down. Then you're gonna take your hinge and you're gonna slide it over those riv nuts and press them through. And they should already fit because we tested this already. And it's gonna be a tight fit, but that's good. It's gonna hold it in there. So if I lift this up, you'll see it's not gonna come loose. 
you have your three rib nuts through the hinge, and now we'll move on to the next part. Now you have your hinge nuts through the hinge, your pin is facing down, so when you bend this up, it kind of comes up like this. Part number five, which is the hinge, the top hinge clamp, it looks like this. We set it down over, and it'll match up with those holes. And you'll want to push that in so it's good and tight. And that will sandwich the hinge in here. So if I lift this up, you can see this is the hinge clamp that we just put on here, part number five. Here's our hinge, this is our base. In the parts, you'll find a piece that looks like this. It has thick washers in it. We're gonna punch out three of those thick washers and we're gonna put those on three of our screws. Then we're gonna fasten those in right here. When you're done, it looks like this. Your hinge flexes and you have your three bolts holding the hinge together. Now we move on to step 14, uh, lid assembly, preparing the lid brace. So what we need is two of your riv nuts. We've been using these. Um, and we're gonna push them through the top of the lid brace here. And the lid brace, I believe, um, is par part 14, I believe the lid brace is. And we have one screw. Now we're gonna flip this upside down. And I'm gonna bring it to the top of the screen so you can see what's going on. Next, we are going to place our... Next, we are gonna take our acrylic here big circle here, and we're gonna put this right on like that. We take our panel here, and the panel is gonna sit on like this, right over the top. Once you got that together, take the one screw we talked about, push that through the acrylic and the top panel, and you wanna screw that in, but you only wanna do one at this time. So screw that down in there and I'm not tightening mine all the way up, just till it gets tight and that's it. When you're done with this step, you're, you'll have one screw in on the front, you'll have your front frame, which has a really cool new sticker here. And then on the back, it'll look like this. So you'll have your brace that we put together, the acrylic and the frame on the bottom. So when you get that screw in, you wanna leave it slightly loose. Now what we need to do is what they call bow the acrylic. And how that's gonna work is we are gonna start a screw very lightly through the back of the brace, um, and then we're gonna bow the screen a little bit until it all fits together and then tighten it in. And why we do this is to ensure that this creates a tight seal against your box. You wanna take a screw here, push it through the top, and just get it just a little bit started just a couple threads into that rib nut in the bottom there. Then what we want to do is kind of bow the piece until, until the rib nut goes through the acrylic here and everything is tensioned nicely. So at this point on this side, there's a gap here and we got the screw started and I'm gonna bow it just a little bit until you can push that rib nut through. Once the rib nut gets popped through there, you can turn it around and you can very slowly start tightening this in. And you wanna do it slowly because you do not wanna cross thread that rib nut. So if you start to cross thread, just take it out and, and start over. Do not force this through. You don't wanna get this stripped. And if everything goes correctly, on the back here, you'll see your rib nuts are flush and everything is pulled tightly down to the glass there. Once that's done, you can tighten the other side up fully and you should be good to go. Now what we wanna do is install the lid to the top of the box. We already built the top of the box, we already built the lid. This is our hinge here. What we need to do is position our hinge here. So here's your rep cord R in this circle here. Um, we are going to position the hinge so it sits over the top like this. Now what you wanna do is make sure everything is straight. These holes need to line up so your rib nuts go through. And this is the reason why we made sure all these uh, rib nuts would go through your hinge. Now you're gonna have in this particular one, and so I'm actually gonna put them in um, before I put the, the hinge down. I found that was a little easier for me. Now the hinge is gonna set down onto that front lid here. and you need to make sure that your acrylic and your lid here is lined up so you can push your rib nuts through 
so they go all the way through to the front and it is kind of a tricky thing but once you get one on like i just got this corner this corner should go in because it should be square now take your time get all four rib nuts pushed into the top here and we'll move on to the next step now once you get these pressed through carefully um, all four of them you want to find uh, right here this is the lid clamps and they are punched in to some pieces that were cut you just punch them out and if at this point if you want to take a sharpie and color where the pieces come out you can go ahead and do that so all you would do is just take a uh, sharpie and where these were connected in just color that so it's uh, black and you don't see those white marks from there what we need to do is flip this thing over you want to make sure your riv nuts stayed in and we are going to put our hinge clamps together by taking two of our screws and pushing them down through and then setting them on like so do that for both sides you want to uh, tighten one side at a time so what that looks like when you're done is this will be secured on with uh, two bolts there and that is clamped on to hold everything together now you can grab your small allen wrench if you're not using one now and just give it a little bit of a tighten don't over tighten these you don't want to crack it go on to the next side and do the same thing now you've officially attached your front panel to the top and it hinges now we need to put the top corner brackets on and um, we're going to need these little washers here to do that so pull a couple of those out and grab a couple of screws and your top corner brackets that we have not used yet take one of these washers here push it down through carefully and then take your allen wrench and make sure you can go through it make sure this screw can go through so now you see it's popping through the washers in the center and we have to do that because there's a little gap right here you're going to take one of the last two pieces you have and we are going to put this on here and it's going to be in this orientation we're going to put that on so the angle part here is facing your glass okay so this is the top this is the acrylic we put on we're going to put this on so the angle part is facing that way we're going to flip this over we're going to do the same thing on the other side so i got these on and i wanted to show you the orientation of these two brackets um, they are straight and this is the angle part of each one right here and when you flip this up that angle part goes towards the door so you want to make sure that these angles are facing forward towards that door now we're going to move on to step 21 because i have the uh, seal kit i need to install the latch a little bit different if you do not have the steel the seal kit um, just go ahead and move to step 22 at this time which we'll do next um, so because i have the seal kit i'm going to put my latch in and it's going to go in like that then i'm going to take the ring here and i'm going to tighten it down onto the acrylic just to make sure it's good and tight and not going anywhere give it a good tighten there and as you can see uh, the latch here is good now what i need to do is install the catch right here and what we do is we with this facing down because when you take the screw out the the lock mechanism will fall out the other side so make sure it's down tight against the table take that screw out like this and you want to take your latch and put it in there and make sure it is facing you this is how it looks this is the screw you took out you put your latch on and you put it in and make sure it's down towards you screw it down so it just sits on there just make sure it's tight take your key Put it in the other side and make sure that your latch moves like this if it's moving backwards it's coming up here you have it on backwards because i have the seal kit what i need to do is prep this right here if you don't have a seal kit you can move on to step number 24 which is just the standard handle installation this will be step number 22 and the first thing i do is i take a couple of square nuts and i push them into the sides 
um, on either side here. And I line them up just like we've been doing the whole time. Now that that's done, I need to make sure that this handle is broken loose because we're gonna use that to seal later. Um, here, it's still 3D printed on there uh, or attached. So we're just gonna take and take our snips and we'll cut those. And there's three little pins to cut. Once you do that, your handle should turn nicely and it'll actually slide off. I clean these up with my snips quick and we'll go on to the next step. Now we need to fasten the handle to the acrylic. Um, this is a step that needs to be done very carefully. So what you're gonna do is, as you can see, I have the R here and it is facing towards you. When I put it down like this, this is the flat side of the latch and the R should be upside down. Push it underneath here and once you get it lined up, you can let this sit down on top of it. What I did was I moved the latch facing up towards me, set this down so I know that it's horizontal inside of here, and we're gonna take two screws and we're gonna very carefully go through the acrylic into that latch. Um, this is really easy to cross thread if you're not straight, so you gotta be very careful and very slow with this. If you feel any resistance at all until you get to the end, you want to back these out and start over again. Okay, now we want to start putting everything together. So you're going to set your base down here. Then what you want to do is set the back on. So the bottom will be slid in, then you'll get your middle piece in, and this is the back piece. Everything fits together into the slots really nicely. And then you put this front piece on here. You want to make sure that the cutouts are inside. So you put that on like so. Then what you'll do is take your top and you'll put your top on carefully, inserting all the pieces right into the cutout. So this is the bottom and this is the back. As you can see, I have a front view kind of and, and kind of showing you from the top here because we're gonna take two screws and we're gonna very carefully screw them in to the base. And we just want to do the two bottom screws for now. This should go very easily because we've already screwed a screw into every single one of those square nuts earlier. It took a little bit longer, but this part goes super simple now. Now, because I have the optional seal kit, uh, what we're going to do is grab this piece here. It sh this piece would have come with your kit. We're going to take two square nuts and put them in the back. We're going to take our two screws and we're gonna push them through the front of the kit. Your latch is actually gonna sit like this. So there'll be a Repcord logo, and you want your latch to sit down right on those screws. Now what I like to do is hold one side and then get one started with one hand. Once you got one started, move to the other side. Um, make sure your square nut's on your screw and get that started too. Push this up so it's flush right here and tighten it in. All right, we're almost done with this part and getting this box put together. Now we need to put the top on in the front that we built earlier. Um, so the top is gonna go into these grooves here. Then it's gonna screw onto the five brackets we did uh, earlier as well. So when you're looking at this, make sure that there's a nut in this hole. And if there's not, you probably put this on upside down. Um, so just, take it off and put it on the right way. You can still do that at this point. It's a good idea to tighten these all in now too before you put the top on. But just make sure that there is a nut right here in each one of these that the screw can go into. Now take your top, carefully put it into the side there, and then same thing with the other side. Make sure it goes into the grooves here. Now we got that side in and we got that side in. So once your top is in the grooves, um, there'll be five screws here. We're gonna install those now and we'll be right back. Something to note here, the three center screws in the back here actually get those thick washers. So I missed that in the instructions the first time, so I wanted to go back and just clean that up. Now that you've got the top on here, we need to do the sides. So I've turned this around so the top is towards you. We're gonna take uh, two of the M3 by 16 screws and we're gonna screw them in to the side panels. Flip it over, do the two on the other side, and you're good. Now what we need to do is install some supports in the bottom. So we're gonna take our uh, cutouts here and push them in. Then we take the other piece and it goes face in. Once you get it right, it'll go into the notches. Make sure everything's in their notches there. 
You wanna take the last trim piece here and push that over the front. And that cleans that up and seals it down. Then we're gonna take three screws and go through and tighten these down. Now we have all three of these screws in, this faceplate is on and our bottom brackets are secured. Now what we wanna do is add our prop. You can do this on either side. I'm gonna do it on this side here. So I'm gonna take and push one of the um, screws through there. Then I'm gonna take one of the thin washers and put it in, then put your prop on like that. Then take the other thin washer, push that on. Then what you wanna do is take one of those um, rivet nuts and those will go with the big side, the flange side facing in towards those washers. And you just wanna hand tighten it in, perfect. Once it's in, it'll be like that and that'll move freely and you can adjust the tension with your rivet nut. Next thing we wanna do is install our plugs. So what you need to do is pop out one of the holes and you're gonna install your plug like this. So the nut will sit in the back there. Then you take your plug and you go in and you screw it in and tighten it. You'll figure out where you want to install them along the front, the top, the bottom, whatever you wanna do, and that's how you'll install those. We're done with the box part, but we need to make the roller parts now. We're gonna start by taking our panel and then taking a couple of those rivet nuts and pushing them into the panel. And some of these are pretty tight. Once that's done, we're gonna take two spacers, these white spacers that came with it, and put them on like this. So this is what you have right now. Then we'll take two of the bearings and put them on. Then we will set this down. And as you can see, it looks like that. So after you put that top panel on, you take your screw and you just screw it down into that rivet nut. These can just be like a quarter pass tight and that will be a single roller. After you have the single roller done, we'll make one more of these and then we'll move on to double rollers. Now we need to make four double rollers. So what we need is three panels here and we'll need pretty much double of everything else. And you'll start by taking uh, one of your screws and screwing it all the way onto one of those rivet nuts. You're actually gonna do this two times. And that's gonna start this process. You'll push them through like normal. Then you wanna take your spacers and drop them on. Take two bearings, just like the single side. We wanna drop this on, and these need to be pushed down. We need to actually do the same thing from the other side. Then you'll take another one, and you need to make sure you're lining up right, and you'll push your rivets in into the back, just like we have been. You'll set your spacers down, and then your bearing. Once you got your bearings and everything in, you'll take your second one, you'll push the rivet nuts down through, and you'll set it down right into the center. And when you do that, it'll hold everything like a sandwich. You'll be able to turn and screw this side in, and it'll catch the back side and hold everything nice and tight together. So this took me a little bit to figure out, but you just wanna make sure all the panels line up before you push your rivets in. So when we're done with the double one, it should look like this. So there's your top here, that's the bottom. Everything's in, it all rolls. So we need to make, I believe, five more of these. Now we have five doubles and two singles, and we're good. Now we need to put our seal kit in, and to do that, we need to grab our Allen wrench and remove the top three screws right at the top here, like this. Now that we've got those out, we need to put our sides in. So we're gonna put two of them together, and they go in this orientation. They kind of clip in, so they, the bottom pushes in, and the top will actually wrap right around that blue uh, bracket that we put in, and you should push them in just like that. Now do the other side. Once the other side's in, we need to do the top mount. So you put it in this orientation and you'll push it up underneath and it'll hold itself in. And then what we need to do is take the washers off of those screws, screw those three screws in here and that will tighten this one in. Now we wanna take the weather stripping that came with the kit and start putting that in. So we're gonna peel the backs off of the sticky part and we're gonna take and push it into one side. And when you do that, uh, you're gonna push it all the way up against that wall, and then you're gonna kind of work it all the way along the top of that seal, the one we just screwed in, uh, so it's nice and stuck down. 
So get it all the way to the end, and there will be a little extra in this one, so kind of squish it down on the end. Run your fingers along it and make sure it's good and tight. Then grab a scissors and cut it a little bit long. Then from there, what you want to do is grab your seal and do the bottom side now. Now that the bottom is done, uh, we need to do the sides. And we have one last piece of weather stripping. You're going to go up one side, cut it, and then do the other side, and the weather stripping will be done. Now that we got all the weather stripping down, uh, it is good to go. We can check out the seal. So we fold this down and we shut the door and you can actually feel how springy and how uh, tight that's going to seal. So I'm going to grab my key and I'm going to lock it in and that is a nice tight fit. Perfect. Next we need to install the hydrometer and it is going to go bottom down right here and it's going to actually push into the glass right here. So we need to flip it over and lay the glass door open with the front facing down. Take a screwdriver, and this is very scary, but uh, you're gonna take a screwdriver and just give it a couple good whacks. This acrylic and wood piece will be left from that punch out. Now what you wanna do is push the hydrometer into that hole, uh, making sure it is straight, and it should just snap right in. It is installed now. If you have any issues, you can trim those little tabs. Well, that's it. Uh, the rip box is done. It took me a while because I'm filming this to put this thing together. I think if you're not filming like this, I think it would only take you about three hours with all of the optional accessories that I have. What we need to do now is get some rollers in here and how about some filament too? So I grabbed this other box that came with it right here. I opened it up and holy crap, this thing is full of filament from Repcord. Uh, that is awesome. I don't even know how to say thank you guys. That is 12 rolls of filament. And I think I can definitely pack this thing up now. Take the two ends and put them in there. And then I believe you'd take the triples that you made and put those in there. They actually sent me extra rollers. So we got the doubles in here and here's a whole bunch more doubles to go in. I think this is enough that I could actually put in every single one of these spools. I think we should try it. I unpacked all of the filament and it is in here. This is amazing. This is 12 rolls of filament and uh, all sorts of colors. We got a battle pack, a rainbow pack. We got, oh man, this, this is awesome. And once I figure out the configuration of where I want this, it is gonna be amazing to print and use this box. Well, <laughs> that's it. This thing is awesome. If we close this, it even looks really awesome. With the door closed, you can put your handle back on. And um, this is the final Repcord Repbox version 2.1. And I tell you what, this thing actually was easier to build than version two. Thank you to uh, Repcord for hooking me up with this box. Full disclosure, they did send it to me. I did not pay for it but I told them I would do a video. Um, there was no money exchanged and all of the opinions were my own. Um, in my opinion, this one is way easier to build than the version two that I did before. Um, I love the look. I love the uh, hydrometer and the lock and the seals feel really nice. I loved how you changed some of the brackets and I really love how it looks with 12 rolls of filament in here. So if you're looking to buy a rep cord, rep box, Go to the website, it's in the link below, and check it out. If you wanna see some of the differences, you can check out my version two video, which I'll put right here. Um, this one, much better, much better. If you got some value from this video and you've stayed with me this long, please give me that like. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. Uh, I, I really, I can't say enough about this thing. I'm gonna figure out a home for this thing. I did not show you the wall mount just because I'm not sure where I wanna put it yet. Well, I hope you learned something today. And as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, I hope you found value in today's video. I hope it helped you build the Repbox version 2.1 from Repcord. Thanks again to Repcord for everything you guys do and I appreciate you guys sending this one my way. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up with the like button. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that now. Click that little subscribe button right here. And if you click the bell next to it, that'll give you notifications anytime we go live or another video comes out. Check out this video. YouTube thinks you're gonna love it.